managers have a major role of achieving organizational results. They put resources together, they mobilize people, put this together, and the end result is uh, achievement of the intended goals. Now and again, they don't achieve these goals. And the reason why? Because numerous reasons, and, uh, but mostly attributed to the, their failure to manage the people that they lead. Uh, it's therefore very important that managers have a bit of leadership knowledge and build some leadership skills to make them effective so that they are in a position to uh, bring together people, manage them, motivate them, and encourage them to perform organizational activities. But uh, what is leadership and what is that key aspect of leadership that managers must understand? Leadership is simply the ability to inspire people, uh, to influence people so that they can willingly uh, achieve or perform the tasks that they are given to achieve the organizational goals. And uh, these skills that they need include team building, conflict management, emotional intelligence, communication, among others. So it's very important that a manager uh, understand these skills and builds them with time so that the manager can be able to be effective and achieve. Now and again, the questions are raised about leadership style. Can a manager be able to understand uh, leadership styles so that he can use these styles to be more effective? Uh, yes, leadership styles range from autocratic to democratic, you know, some kind of a continuum. So, but each one of us has a predominance of style. You may be predominantly democratic, you may be predominantly autocratic. So these styles uh, really affect the way in which a leader exercises his authority and affect the results that you see that come out of uh, any uh, situation that we may have in our organizations. So what is autocratic style and what is the democratic style? Autocratic style are leaders who tend to be, if I use the word bosse, uh, it may not be suitable in some cases, but those who uh, take decisions on their own, they rarely consult others, they don't involve people in decision making, they give directives for, you know, um, uh, whereas the democratic style is one which is collaborative, uh, the, the leader consults the followers as, as they try to go out and see what they need to do. Now, as I said, you have a predominance, you are either autocratic or you are democratic. However, the exposure you get through training enables you to be aware that there are different styles you can adopt. It enables you to be aware of the advantages and disadvantages of each so that you can be in a position to change your behavior. Leadership is a behavior, it's something that can be learned. You may be able to leave some of the behaviors and adopt those behaviors which are going to give you good results. But generally, the autocratic style is good for people who are not motivated. It's also good when you have uh, lower level staff, or staff who perform those functions that are very task oriented. Uh, so a leader may be predominantly democratic, but when dealing with this kind of staff, it may be useful to adopt an autocratic style. So that's why I'm saying that when you learn what these are, you are able to adapt your leadership style the conditions you are in. On the other hand, uh, if you are dealing with peers who have similar qualifications with you, uh, people who you sit with on the table uh, to discuss issues, it's preferable that you are consultative. However, it doesn't always work out that way. The relationship style that you adopt should depend on the circumstances that you are in. There may be a time when you need to shout at your peers. There may be a time when you need to involve your subordinates into taking a decision that affects them. So leadership styles depend on the situation that you are in. And the variety of them, we shall be discussing some of them in our later series.